How about seven minutes in heaven? Let's do it. All right. You know what we do here. We like to tell you about our favorite scenes from the film. We want to let you know what makes us feel like that kid in the closet film uh, feeling when you were younger. And that means if you were playing the game or in the world we live in now, maybe you haven't come out yet. Well, guys, I want you to come out, check out this show and tell us what were your favorite scenes from the film? Because we're about to tell you ours. Durden, go up. You're first. My number three is uh, this. Was, I love this movie because it made this uh, this segment very easy because the scenes are so clearly defined. And I didn't really go by like the scenes. I did the story, like with the command, which commandments were my favorite. Um, uh, my number three was uh, don't take the Lord's name in vain because you have uh, you have the, the character of Jesus H. Christ played by <laughs> or Justin Throw. <laughs> Uh, the, the dude with and I love the fact that he's credited it as Jesus H. Christ. I think that's that's good. Nice touch. The dude with one leg that is hopping along with Gretchen Mole and in, in her wagon. Uh, Angela pointed this out to me when we watched it recently. If you notice, like Jesus is uh, whittling that dude a leg. And then when the guy is wearing the leg, when he takes Gretchen Mole away from the town, dude's still hopping. Even with the leg on. Can I can I ask can I I'll request elaboration. Okay. I want should I say I want to add just one thing to that there. Uh notice now, go back and check this out and fact check me on this one. I'm a, if I thought I was right last week, I know that I'm right. This does f up part about him. When he first meets her, when she first gets there, and she's we'll talk about what she's doing later because that might be one of your scenes. When he first sees her behind her, like you say, he, he's whittling the guy's leg. Right behind him on the table is the perfect limp leg, and he won't f make it for him. I went back and checked. I'm like, look at this, sh you sick bastard. He's, yeah, I, I did not notice that. I did, but man. Fing crazy, dude. The uh, uh, the the looks that that Jesus gives in that in that story make the whole thing almost the long stares really selling his mystery and sex appeal. This is the uh, commandment where this is the commandment where we get Jason Sudeikis on his knees in the library for no reason. Um, the other great thing about this story is the music, the El Fuego, El Fuego, <laughs> which really it's the fire. It's like the most. Um, generic lyrics for a song ever and the best part about this scene and uh, honestly probably one of the best parts of the whole movie is the narration and the the, the f guy that just is infatuated with the word vahina 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 mm. one of my favorite parts is when Paul Roy comes out in front of the Ten Commandment tablets. And if you look there, he he starts to go into a story about Gretchen. He's like, you know what? Never mind. You didn't come for here, here for this. You don't want to hear my shit. And to me, like we just did in that last segment, if he hasn't pissed off every conservative uh, Christian from here to, for, to the Bible Belt, at that point, they're not watching this film. But for mm -hmm. me, I was locked in. I was like, oh, I know what we're getting into now. So that was really one of my favorites because at the beginning, and it's, it's a tone set. It yeah, really is. That's right when it gets into commandment number two. Right. The deuce. Poop. My, uh, speaking of number two, the deuce, poop. Uh, my number two is No Other Gods Before Me, the, the story of Stephen Montgomery. 30 seconds into the movie and you have Adam Brody jumping from a plane to which the the instructor holds up the parachute to let us know that he's leaped from the plane enthusiastically without a parachute um, and the uh, you get the sleazy reporter La Fonda the way he spits before any uh, any take before the cameraman yells action he's always got to spit before his first line I thought that was hilarious he's like God you smell good is that coffee breath? Okay, five, four, Tell me later. three, two. Thanks, Jim. And then uh, in the studio, he's like, Lift me up into the heaven. You lift me up beyond the sky. Look out. Four, three. <sighs> then you have uh, Ron Silver as the agent. When it when it shows Ron Silver in the office and only you only see the agent Ron Silver and uh, Harlan Swallows the ventriloquist oh my gosh. and he's like giving this he's he's like giving this dude a reaming and you're like obviously these these scathing words belong to the ventriloquist this is who they're the direct they're directed to and then it reveals this poor girl sitting there who like get the hell out of my office and she has to leave and you it leaves you to wonder. What, what could be, what about this person's performance could be so vile 
that she deserved these words, not the ventriloquist. What is worse than ventriloquism? This, this, this okay. And this is why I say we have the same one on that one. That was definitely one of my top three scenes. And I, I but I did you see the way Ron Silver looks at Harlan Swallows after after yeah, she he's, leaves? He's, he's like, like, how the hell did she get in there? Yeah. But but no. But this is my thought process. This is the way I took it. I took it as. And I guess I shouldn't have took it that way, but at that moment in my mind, I thought they were playing off of it. In my mind, this is how I saw it when I first saw it. It was like the office, the boss, the secretary, the performer, the firing. One of these things are not like the other. And in my mind, I thought, because the movie was so obscure, I still thought that the, the ventriloquist was the secretary. And he was like, and so when he was like, how the hell is she getting in? He answers him with the little question. I'm like, oh, shit. And when, like I say, that's just a brilliant setting because... Again, it's playing with your mind, and they're they're not feeding you the narrative. She gets out there and runs out of oh, like now you can be dramatic. That yeah. is, you know what I'm saying? But then, that was a good one, man. Really. And good. then in that story, like you get one of my favorite songs in the movie, the uh, the the theme song to Go in Nowhere. I think is the name of the show about Stephen Montgomery. With the Firm in the ground is uh, it's fantastic, a perfect parody on those types of songs. Oh man, let me. I know we're going back and forth, but I got to get this one out because you, you you didn't steal in my thunder on that one, but that was definitely one of my favorite ones. This is a honorable mention one for me, and I I don't know if you have it in there, but God damn it, man, talk about slapstick comedy, literally. Hey, Daddy loves you. <laughs> Daddy loves you. Oh, Daddy yes. loves you. Well, that dude, that sh there, like that kid had to be like, man, what am I signing up for? It looked like he really smacks his kid. Set up a cat scan. I set up a VCR. Ray! I set up a VCR. Ray! I set up a VCR. Ray! 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 I did set up the VCR though. Ray! 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 Why? <laughs> Ray! 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 Suddenly, I'm the bad guy. Sorry, Jake. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the kid goes, I'd sit up the VCR. Smack! Daddy loves his little boy. I love you too, Daddy. Daddy loves, loves his little boy. And then he's like, I did set it up though. Smack! <laughs> then when it cuts to Joe, Latrug Joe Latruglio, the neighbor, and he just like, the beat on that is so quick when it, I don't know what his son did exactly, but Joe Latruglio slaps the sh out of his kids like i'm sorry i'm sorry they don't get down like that over there go ahead sir that that's my number one scene What's, oh, that, 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 uh, oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. the the covet the neighbor's goods with leave schreiber and joe latruglio the the slapping is is amazing the when when uh ray is on the phone uh ordering another mri machine and his wife comes running in she's like this is insane stop it you I'm sorry, honey. I didn't see you there. The scene could have won my number one just alone for Lee Schreiber's mustache. You have that moment when they're in the doorway, uh, the uh, McDonald's. Burger King. Woundies. I love it. Little changes to the names of the most famous fast food chains. Uh, it's such a trivial thing that that is what ends up being the the catalyst for them like finding common ground and becoming friends because mm -hmm. he's like you know oh I, I like that i love it ray i really do love it ray i really do love it and then from that point on they're friends over something so stupid um this sequence has my favorite score of the whole film out of all the great music in the movie 
There's this uh, funny moment when Janine Garofalo is screaming with Zach Orth in the uh, the nuclear when everything's the going crazy, and then mm-hmm. um, that was almost an extension to a scene uh, with them screaming in Wet Hot American Summer. And of course, the intro we did, one of the greatest moments in the 10. Is you the did. Ju- that was all you, man. Come on, man. <laughs> the jukebox moment, the way uh, uh, Latruglio dances over, the way they both quietly sway in silence awkwardly until Joe finally begins the first lines of dialogue. Uh, Lee Schreiber with his, let's give him something to talk about. Give him something about. Right. Killed it. And I've never seen Lee Schreiber in a role like that, which made that scene extra enjoyable. Cotton, man, you've come a long way. My, 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 uh, my number one, man, I don't even need to see it, but to me, that courtroom scene with that beautiful black, she had to be from Wakanda Judge. Listen, man, that was a f- classic. The dialogue, the pacing, the timing, like that, that scene could have been over in like 10 seconds. She was like, You want to go through the whole rigmarole? They comes back like three and a half hours later. She was like, Ain't that what I said three and a half hours ago? So she's so pissed off at that. So anybody that even looks at her the wrong way for the right reason is going to get slew. And that's why that guy got fired. He was probably like, thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. And she yeah. was like, and you, you're disbarred. Is that how the judicial system works? Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer. <laughs> <laughs>